or open a notes section on your computer. Um, there will be lots of things that you'll want to note today that will be very helpful for you. Again, welcome. We'll begin very shortly. Do tell us in that chat box where you're joining us from and what type of work you're seeking. LinkedIn's always updating their platform. So I know we'll all learn new things today that will help us in whether it's a job search or just professional career development. So glad you've joined us. Welcome to Central Kentucky Job Club. We have a few networking events coming up, in-person networking events. For those that are in the region, watch the chat box and you can learn more details about those upcoming networking events, but great opportunities to get back out and interact with people. 80% of jobs are still found through some form of direct contact and or networking. So join us for those events if you can. Details are in the chat box. Let's go ahead and begin. Today, we have a fabulous speaker, but first let's hear some success stories in the chat box. Uh, let us know, have you had a recent interview? Um, maybe you've set up a networking coffee. Perhaps you've updated your resume or your LinkedIn profile. We always love hearing what you're doing to move forward in your search. And also, it's always exciting when we hear about you landing new positions, which we know you all are going to eventually do that. So please let us know. Send us an email. Um, share with us in the chat box. Let us know um, your successes so that we can celebrate with you. Our mission of the Central Kentucky Job Club is to provide a positive environment for job seekers to network and learn best practices for the job search. We meet on the second and fourth Tuesday of each month, and you can find the schedule at ukalumni.net forward slash job club. Our facilitators and our team, I'm Caroline Francis, Director of UK Alumni Career Services. I'm joined by Diana Doggett, Extension Specialist, Special Projects. Also, Nicole Waite is with us today. She's an Employment Specialist with UK Steps Temporary Employment. Behind the scenes, so many wonderful people make Job Club possible. Suzanne Smith and Sunny Saylor from Fayette County Extension, Queen Sullivan, Christy Kaufman, and Lindsay Cottle, all with the UK Alumni Association. Thanks to our awesome team for bringing you Job Club twice a month, year long, in our 10th year. <laughs> Job Club is currently hosted in a hybrid format. For those that are in and around Fayette County, we do encourage you to come in person where you can get that wonderful networking. Sometimes employers will even show up. Welcome all the people that are joining us now. Uh, we have several coming in the room as we're speaking. Uh, we also welcome our folks from afar or who are not able to join us in person via Zoom webinar where there's a chat moderator available, and then Facebook Live, which is view only, so there's no chat box moderator or job lead newsletter options for the Facebook um, Live option, though. You can receive our free Job Club resource packet um, on our uh, website for Job Club. Also, it's linked in the newsletter that you'll get after Job Club today, so be sure and check out those wonderful resources. We also highly encourage you to join our LinkedIn group. Um, that information uh, is on the screen or in the chat box. Fabulous Central Kentucky Job Club sharing community. Many times employers send us job leads that will close before the next Job Club newsletter goes out. 
So make it a part of your regular job search two or three times a week to look at that LinkedIn group. Wide variety of jobs are on there. Uh, and if a company's hiring for one position, they may be hiring for others. So use that as a trigger to give you ideas of companies to go to their website or reach out to for further opportunities. Employers and recruiters are always welcome at Job Club. In-person employer guests may have a one-minute spotlight to share active job leads with the group, and that'll be later in the program. Also, please watch your email. Later today, we will have a newsletter that goes out with job leads that have been emailed to us very recently. <laughs> Some attendees are conducting a confidential job search, so please let's be respectful of privacy of other job seekers that you may see their name in the chat or see them in person. Again, do check out our job search related articles in our packet and the recordings are also available on our website, ukalumni.net forward slash job club and also through the extension club website. A wonderful, wonderful recordings. I know we send a lot of our career clients to the archive to watch these great uh, topically re relevant job search presentations. We'd like to welcome our first timers. You're going to receive a short survey after today's meeting and that will get you in the system. So we appreciate your great ideas and feedback and um, watch for that survey. Any additional success stories that have come in? Anybody in the audience have a success story? Anything in that chat? And do keep us posted on the progress of your search so we can share that good news. <clears throat> Thrilled to have our presenter today, former colleague, friend, and respected peer, Amanda Shagney. Amanda's new position is Senior Organizational Development Specialist with Enterprise, Enterprise Learning, which is UK Healthcare. Extremely knowledgeable on LinkedIn and many other job search relevant topics. She holds the highest credentials to career counselors, certified career counselor, certified clinical supervisor of career counseling, certified career transition coach. She's uh, certified in many assessments such as the Clifton Strengths, the MBTI, and the Strong Interest Inventory. She also has published with the National Career Development Association and has been past president of the Kentucky Career Development Association. She's also written columns formerly for the Lexington Herald Leader sharing business and job search related tips. She earned a certificate in business administration, master's degree in counseling psychology, and a BA in psychology from UK and is a proud member of the UK Alumni Association. Please help me welcome Amanda Shagney. Thank you so much for the warm welcome, Caroline. Let's get started with LinkedIn. So I'm curious in the chat box, um, who in the group already has a LinkedIn, who does not have a LinkedIn profile so that I can kind of gauge where we're at with the group. I'll watch for the chat box here. And if you already do have a profile, I'm curious how many times a month you might log into it. So I see someone on there says, I do. It's good. So one person already has a profile. Someone's checking it daily. That makes me proud. Ooh, have it daily, several times weekly. Excellent. Now I'm surprised by that, to be honest. Most folks on the call I figured would say, oh, I have one, but I check it like once a month or so. So I'm pretty impressed here checking it weekly, checking it once or twice a week and daily. So lots of active users in here. So I'll try to give some more advanced tips as we're going along. Now, if you're on the call and you didn't participate in the chat and you're just starting, that's okay too. This can very much be a working session for you. So if you're working on your LinkedIn profile on the other screen, or if you want me to do split screen to follow along while you're making edits, we welcome that. That's absolutely fine. Okay, we already talked a little bit about, um, about me. Thanks for the intro, Caroline. That's good to go. Okay, disclaimer, there's no one way to do LinkedIn. 
if we looked at the profiles that are already in the group, I bet everyone's profile would look a little bit different and that's good. No one right way to do this. So we're gonna demonstrate our own, um, my own personal account. There's some screen grabs even from Caroline's profile in my slides, um, but know that your profile should and will look very different because it's going to showcase your area of expertise and that is totally fine. It should look different. All right. For those that are new to LinkedIn, what is LinkedIn? Well, it's kind of like Facebook with a briefcase. Uh, LinkedIn is an online network for business professional students designed specifically for professional networking. And one question that I'll often get from those that are new to the group is, well, how do I know if I should friend request someone on LinkedIn or not? Like, how do I know whenever I should connect with them? Well, the best judgment that I, that I would give is if, you, if someone is at the professional acquaintance level, if you met them once at a conference or a networking event, it's absolutely fine to add them to LinkedIn. Uh, and that way you're keeping up with their good professional news. Absolutely fine to include them, even after meeting them just one. Um, nine out of 10 employers use LinkedIn during the hiring process. That's what the latest data is telling us. So best practice for hiring is for managers to Google your name. And we know that LinkedIn has a lot of search power. So it's likely one of those top links. So if you're following along and you're making this a working section, uh, a working session, you might do a quick Google of your name on your phone or in another browser, just to see is your LinkedIn profile coming up as high as you want it to. Okay, let's talk a little bit generally about navigating LinkedIn. I'm gonna talk a little bit about each of the section headers and I'm gonna swivel over my homepage over here so you all can see and we'll kind of talk through each of those section headers. So for those that are new to the group, it looks a great deal like Facebook. There's a news feed here saying new posts because there's something that's loaded up even since I opened it just a few minutes ago. And inside of the news feed is information posts from my first degree connections or maybe a first degree connection commented or liked something that someone else posted. Um, content from groups that I'm following or hashtags that I'm following are all going to show up in the news feed section right here in the middle. Under the My Network icon, the second one there, that's where we can grow our network on LinkedIn. And that's where you'll see your invitations as you're connecting. And whenever you first set up your LinkedIn account, and if you haven't, it'll keep emailing you, recommending to do it. It'll ask you if you want to sync your contacts from Outlook or from an email account. And generally, that's a pretty good idea because it'll allow you to see everyone that you've emailed quickly in LinkedIn. Okay. So I, I would recommend doing that. The job board up here, we'll talk about that in a little bit. There's a direct messaging feature and the notifications feature, very similar to other social media outlets where you can um, keep up with news if someone were to message or comment on your posts and then your profile. We'll talk a little bit about that next. Swivel this back over. But generally, that's a little bit about navigating. Let's talk a little bit about the profile. Okay, we'll start with our profile kind of basics and we'll break down each of those section headers. So if you're an advanced user, there's lots of advanced users of LinkedIn in the group. Be thinking, listening, jotting down notes for how you can take your profile from good to great, okay? Let's talk a little bit about characteristics of a professional uh, profile picture. So we wanna add a very professional looking profile. Doing this, LinkedIn tells us, will make your profile seven times more likely to be found in searches. We can't pass on that search power, that's amazing. Um, whenever we say a LinkedIn headshot or a professional photo, we don't mean that a professional photographer has to take it. You don't have to pay lots of money for a headshot photo. Um, you can use your, your smartphone to take a really good photo. And if you take it on portrait mode um, or even on regular mode, you can take a fine LinkedIn photo for that. Now, it's not selfie close. It's not just, you know, your face. It, it does include typically your shoulder, so maybe from here up. Um, and a little bit of background. So be mindful of background whenever we're um, thinking about our LinkedIn profile, okay? Ideally uh, taken by someone else and should be a good view of your shoulders up. Thinking of a neutral background, such as a nice wall or even an outdoor area that has good light on your face. And you should wear business professional clothing and your hair should be well kept. So keep your hair out of your face um, for your photo. Okay, what else? Try to update your photo as your physical appearance changes over time. 
in the chat box. Let's just own it. Um, do you think it's time to update your LinkedIn profile? When was the last time you updated it? If it's been a couple of years, uh, let's see who all's adding. I'm looking over at the chat now. Who's adding that to their to-do list to update that LinkedIn headshot photo? And watch for those to come through on the chat. 2020 is not bad. In a couple of years, maybe it's time to take a freshman. But you and I both know some of our colleagues are using photos that they took 20 years ago. So it's time. <laughs> it's been about five years. Updated mine last week. Excellent. Recently, a couple months ago. It's absolutely fun. Sometimes folks will ask, like, how often do I need to update it? Maybe annually, um, every other year, perhaps. It's not like other social media platforms where you may feel like the pressure to update it. Uh, more regularly than that. That's okay. Okay. It sounds like a couple of folks need to add that to their to-do list, and that's okay. Now we're going to navigate down the profile page just a little bit to pass the photo to the profile headline and about section. Okay. The summary section or the profile headline, which is right underneath your name, defaults to your current job title and organization. So if you go in and you type in all of your work experience content, then it'll auto-populate your current title and organization. Now we can customize it from there. We don't have to, but it could be a nice branding statement to think about. So stand out with a keyword rich headline that describes how you want to be known on LinkedIn. So it may be specialty areas. You can see mine as an example on there, um, but it can also be your, your job title and the organization, either spot. Okay, this is the first thing that someone's going to see about you when they view your profile. So we want to make sure it's an accurate depiction of you as a professional. And this can really easily update, um, update you as you're entering your work experience. So always double check that. It'll default back. So anytime you tinker with your work experience, it'll, it'll populate over it. So you might start with desired um, title, with key skill, seeking new opportunity in preferred industry. So if you're a job seeker and you're not conducting a confidential job search, it's okay to put on there seeking positions in technology infrastructure and cybersecurity. So it's okay to put that out there. Um, okay, so in the chat box, what keywords do you want recruiters and HR managers to associate with your expertise? Let's do a little brainstorm in the chat, bo chat box. I'm watching for those. And we can kind of work on an example profile headline. Now, while I'm watching for those to come through in the chat, um, here's how you update that profile headline if you're working on it now. So whenever you log into LinkedIn, click on the Me tab on the top right, click on View Profile, and then click on the pencil icon really close to your name on the right-hand side. And then the field that says Headline, that's where you update it. Some, some of these updates are hard to do on the app. Um, so it, sometimes you have to do it on the desktop. Um, someone says on here, you use the same ones that you use in a resume. I absolutely agree. Keywords, exactly the same strategy that you're using in your resume and you're using on in your interviews. We want to know what recruiters and managers, how we're going to associate your words of expertise. So very similar across those platforms. That is important. Very good. All right. Let's talk about the about section. It's a little bit further down. And that's where we can provide a little more narrative about our experience, okay? So the main objective is to inform viewers of who you are, what's important to you, and what it is that you do. Think of that section as your elevator pitch, per se, okay? You have about a minute to tell someone uh, about yourself in an elevator pitch, but on screen, we have just, you know, a couple of lines. What are some of the most important things that they need to know about you as a professional? So in the chat, maybe in one phrase, 10 words or less, what do you want hiring managers to associate with your brand? And considering, the, please consider those words for your headline and your about section. And watch for those to come through as we're chatting. Okay, now's a good time for any, any questions in the in-person group or online. Feel free to pop those into the chat and I'm happy to take those as we go. Moving. Let's talk about professional experience now. We're moving down the profile, and that professional experience section on LinkedIn is going to allow you to tag companies that you've worked for. So whenever you're filling out that profile, um, whenever you are typing the company name, you'll see underneath that logos and company pages will auto-populate. 
And if that company has a profile, a company profile or page on LinkedIn, it's easy to tag them on there. And that looks really nice. Um, so this feature will make you more findable, especially for recruiters seeking out candidates from a specific employer. We know that recruiters and HR hiring managers um, are using a version of LinkedIn called Sales Navigator or the recruiting version, and they can do a search on profiles very similar to what we know about um, keyword searches on resumes. So we want our profile to be very keyword rich. So we're gonna include our job title, we're gonna select the auto-generated option when we can, and we're gonna avoid using overly creative job titles. Some job titles, and there, if there's folks from UK uh, on the call, UK's job title series is a good example where you're student affairs officer three. That's not necessarily as helpful uh, in the job search as director of student success. So using those functional job titles as you think appropriate. So highlight that relevant experience and conversational formatting and in brief manageable bullets. Okay, you'll see some folks um, not include job entries or job descriptions in those postings, but they are searchable. So I do recommend spending some time on those, especially if you have great accomplishments that you want to feature on. there. Okay, I think that's it for professional experience. Let's talk about the education section next. Okay, some essential things that we want to make sure are on there. Your name of the name of the school, institution, college, the degree details, any specific field of study, and start and end dates if it's within the last five years or so. If you're a recent graduate and you're looking at your resume and you don't have a whole lot of experience yet, that's okay. We've all been there. Um, then it's appropriate to include your graduation date on there. If you're more than five years out, then it's probably a good idea to go ahead and cut your graduation dates from both your resume and your LinkedIn. As we gain more experience and become seasoned professionals, um, age discrimination is something that a lot of job seekers who are more seasoned in, the, in, the, um, in their field of expertise become more cognizant of. And so not including our education or graduation years is one way to kind of pivot from that. Okay, activities, societies that you may have been part of, any external documents that may recognize your work could be appropriate, um, especially if you're a recent graduate. I do see a question in the chat, so I'm going to pivot over there. If you're searching for jobs confidentially, should you update your profile or tag employers? Does that alert your employer that you might be job searching? That is a great question. Whenever you, I'm going to pivot back just a second to the professional experience section. Whenever you are entering the professional experience, you go to I'm going to swivel over here. You go down to the experience section and you click the plus sign right here. And whenever you're adding a position or adding your entries, there's a section right here that says notify network. If you are conducting a confidential job search, it is essential that you leave this on the off position. Okay. It won't notify your employer, but it will notify all of your connections that you have a new intern. Okay, so if we're conducting a confidential job search, we'll want to make sure that whenever we're doing these entries, by default, anything that says notify network is turned off. Excellent question. Keep them coming. Okay, back to my notes here. Okay, I think that's it for education too. Let's talk about recommendations and skills a little bit further down on the profile section. These are great sections that can highlight your competency in certain skill areas within or within a desired field if you're targeting something else, okay? There's a new feature on here that um, has popped up in the last couple of weeks that I want to tell you about. This is what the skill section looks like now. And so as a career counselor and as a career coach, you can imagine that career counseling, career development, organizational development are skills that I've been endorsed for. That's no surprise. Um, and I'm grateful for those. But the new feature that is really nice is whenever you go in and you click those skills, you can assign them to specific jobs that you've had and they populate up under your work experience. So you can see here um, adjunct faculty. So I teach part time in the College of Communication. And so the skills that are um, essential for that area, I was able to tag right underneath and that auto populated from the skill section up into my work experience. That's a really interesting thing, especially for 
folks who are looking to do a job, a career change, looking to bridge into different areas. Um, so it's always a good practice to endorse colleagues on LinkedIn because the chances that they're going to return are high. And that only adds clout to our, our, to our profile here. Okay, it looks like there might be another question in the chat here. I'm going to pivot over. Regarding linking employers if they are not currently on LinkedIn, auto on LinkedIn, do you link to someone else who's made one or just leave it dead without knowledge? Okay, so I think the question is, if you are trying to enter an employer that may not have a page on LinkedIn, then their logo is not going to populate on there. And sometimes that happens with small to mid-sized companies. You might do outside of adding it in the experience section, do a search in the top for the company name and see if you can find it. It might be worded a little bit different. Sometimes the company will have LLC next to it or INC incorporated um, on it. So double check to make sure that you are that you can't find it. Sometimes they do not. That's okay. And there's no expectation that you make a company page for a, a previous or a current employer, unless that's in your wheelhouse if you're a marketing expert um, on that team for that organization. So if that's the case, then it's okay if it doesn't link over to the company. That's absolutely fine. Good question. Okay, back to recommendations and skills. Um, so we talked a little bit about skills sections. Within the recommendation section of your profile, you can ask people for a short recommendation. This isn't like a lengthy letter of recommendation if we're applying to graduate school, um, but it's just a couple of lines, a quick paragraph, maybe three, four, five sentences. And when you're asking colleagues for one, make sure you're specifically asking for a positive one. Ask if they can speak to this skill that you're trying to demonstrate in, in your uh, profile. Okay. Similarly, it's a good practice to have a good positive recommendation ready and available for individuals that will write one for you. The power of reciprocation is strong on this one. So think about the colleagues that know your work the best. Go in and write a quick recommendation for them. And whenever you send it their way in LinkedIn, there's a, an option where you can click, say, request one back. And so then it sends an email to that person and it says, oh, Amanda wrote a recommendation for you on LinkedIn. And it shows a preview of it. And it'll say, would you like for this to be public on your profile or not? Most people are going to click yes, but it's nice to know you can toggle those on and off as you like individual recommendations. And then it'll say, okay, are you ready to write one back for them? They've requested it. So it makes it a little bit easier, maybe a little more approachable to be able to, um, to do those quick recommendations. Now, there's no expectation that your profile um, has 50 recommendations and skill sections. We're really focusing in on your area of expertise. And so there's no um, specific number of skills or recommendations that you have to have. But having a handful really does add clout and credibility to your profile at quick glance, especially when those manage hiring managers are looking for specific skill sets. So for those of you that are already using LinkedIn, especially those that are looking at it daily, one of those good to great moments is going in. And even if you have a skill section already built here, go into each of those skills and go in. And when you click them, it'll allow you to say, which job did you use this skill in? And you click any or all of your work experience, and then it'll populate right on the top with your work experience. So add that to your to-do list if that's for you. Okay, let's talk about more ways to go from good to great. Adding visual elements. Adding visual elements to your profile when you can using the featured section is a great way to do this. And I'm using Caroline's profile as an example here. She does a great job using the featured section. So look her up on LinkedIn if you're looking for a little sample. The featured section allows you to link to news articles, upload presentations, link to webinars or projects. Um, or good news that you've been part of. You can also add media under a specific job entry. And that's really interesting, especially for those who are working in more creative um, elements. You may be able to upload a, a couple of samples of your work, uh, like a, a digital portfolio or a link to a personal website if it's appropriate for the job search. So using that featured section very strategically can be really good for job seekers. Note where it is on the profile. We have our photo, our name, our about section, and then boom, right underneath that is the featured section, section. So it populates over the experience. So if we're a career changer and we're looking 
to bridge into a new area and we want to highlight specific skill sets, we may use the featured section to deter the eye from our most recent work entry, which would be very high on our um, profile. So if this is you, jot that down on your to-do list. Oh, here's a good question in the chat. I'm trying to make a career pivot. Should I redesign my LinkedIn so that it matches the new career area I want to pivot into? For example, I would, would I develop new bullet points for my job entries so that they match keywords, skills, and experiences that relate to jobs in the new field that I'm wanting to pivot into? Yes, absolutely. Every hiring manager and every um, HR like recruiter is looking at those profiles for that checklist of essential skills for that job you want to go in. So as the candidate, the burden of proof that you can provide those skills is on you, right? And so anything that we can do to frame um, our resume, our interview strategy, our LinkedIn profile, any facet of the job search, the networking strategy, in order to make ourselves look more attractive um, for that job, we got to do it. We have to do it. Very good question. Okay, here's another one in the chat. I created several pieces of documentation for a previous employer. Is there a way to reference or link the, to those documents while maintaining the organization's ownership of the documentation? That is a great question. And I think in that scenario, I don't know if I would use the featured section so much as I would use the option underneath the job entry. Let me show you something real quick. So I'll give an example here. Underneath this work entry right here, when I worked with Alumni Career Services, then whenever you go in here, you can link specific media underneath that work entry. So it's not populating above my work experience. It's populating within it. How you add that is you go to the pencil icon and then go to the pencil icon underneath that work entry, the company that we have in, in question here, Erin. And then we scroll down. And then we add media right here. And that media might be a hyperlink to something. The ones that I've used here are examples. They're hyperlinks to uh, Philanthropy's website, as an example here, or an article that I wrote. It's, it's actually um, linking to the article. So it's not my, my, it's my content, but it's somewhere else, if that makes sense. Okay. All right. Excellent questions. Keep those coming. All right, let's talk about age-proofing your profile. Now, when we're working on our resume, we don't want to we don't want to age ourselves, and that same concept applies to LinkedIn. So, if you receive something like a degree or an award more than five years ago, we want to avoid including specific dates. It's okay if it's underneath that work entry, but we want to be careful with that. Now, if we have work experience from ten plus years ago, that's not relevant to your recent work experience or it's not related to your field or the area that you're looking to pivot to, you might choose to exclude it from your LinkedIn profile and resume. We can be really selective and we can call that on our resume relevant experience and not a battery of our full experience. For older job titles, update them with what the job title is more commonly referred to as now. So a more modern um, job title is absolutely fine. There's a question in the chat. As a newbie, is there a best practice on adding connections and growing your network quickly? Do employers make judgments on how many connections you have? Okay, good questions. Um, there is a best practice on adding connections. If you sync your email to it, it'll happen pretty quickly. You'll be able to see most of the folks, if they can find an email address um, that someone has their LinkedIn profile with, chances are you're going to know that person. You can quickly add them to your network. So syncing your email is pretty quick. If you spend some time in the My Connections tab or My Network tab, right here on the top, LinkedIn is smart enough to know that you're more likely to know a second degree connection than a fifth degree connection. What does that mean? That means someone that I know who they know, okay? So there's two degrees of separation from them. We're more likely to know friends of friends than we are complete strangers. LinkedIn's smart enough to know that. 
And so it'll show you whenever you're going through people you may know from the University of Kentucky, it's looking at my work experience there. It'll say, oh, you have 22 connect mutual connections. You have 35, you have 40 mutual connections. So the chances of me knowing folks with lots of mutual connections is much higher than folks just on LinkedIn random, right? So it's smart enough that it'll recommend folks that you probably know. So not hard to build out your network pretty quickly. On there. Second question, do employers make judgments on how many connections you have? I don't think so. I'm curious if there are um, recruiters or HR professionals on the call, feel free to put in the chat your two cents on that. Um, but I, I think that they're more interested in, can they find professional content on you? Um, can they find unprofessional content on you? And so we know that LinkedIn has a lot of search power to put professional content out there. So my gut says, as long as you have a good, clean, um, professional looking profile, it doesn't mean that you have to get on LinkedIn every day as an active job seeker. That's okay. All right. Do you recognize this fellow on the screen? In the chat, if you recognize who that is, put it, put it in the chat. Who is that guy? That's Waldo. Yep, Aaron got it. Okay, so in the job search, we do not want to be Waldo. It should be so easy to find us. Now, for people who don't know who Waldo is, Waldo, maybe someone in the chat helped me. How would you describe the Where's Waldo game? There's, imagine a picture of lots of teeny tiny like images and you're trying, the game is you're trying to find Waldo. And there's people dressed like him in this little beanie hat and, um, and striped sweater everywhere. And we're trying to find this one specific character. So the, the game is trying to find someone that's hard to find. But with LinkedIn and in the job search, we don't want it to be hard to find uh, your professional content. So we do not want to be a Waldo, okay? Let's think about privacy settings on here too. Control whether um, underneath, well, actually I'll show you on the privacy settings, what would they need to be? Let me swivel this over. For those that are conducting a confidential job search, these may be different than those that are doing a pretty public job search. I'm gonna go up to the icon that shows my face here, the me, and I'm gonna click settings and privacy. Excellent. And then underneath here, we're gonna to go to visibility and then some others that you might check. Click on into all of these and really comb through them. There's one setting in there I want to make sure that you do see under data privacy and visibility. It's whether or not you want to be shown as open to work for those that have the HR version of LinkedIn. Be mindful of that. If you're an active job seeker, it could be really beneficial for you to turn that on. But if you're conducting a confidential job search and you know that anyone on your team or your human resources team uses LinkedIn to scout for talent, they'll also be able to see it. So be mindful of that. Okay, other ways that you can make your profile more easily discovered, okay? Customize your profile URL and put it on your website, or your resume, your email signature, any business cards to drive traffic to your LinkedIn profile. Now, for those of you that are regular users of LinkedIn, if you haven't done this yet, this is an easy, easy way that you can go from good to great again. And how you do that, this is one you cannot do on your phone. It has to be on a desktop. You go to your me section and you're looking at your profile. And up here on the top right, you hit edit public profile and URL. And then you do this little pencil icon right here. The default will be a jumble of letters and numbers. Not helpful, not easy to find. We want this to be some combination of your name here. Okay. It doesn't have to be first name, last name, um, but any combination of that. Okay. Other ways to make yourself more easily discovered on there are to add your industry, add your zip code to your profile so that recruiters um, looking for candidates like you can find you easily. And then we talked about those job seeking preferences on there. Okay, question in the chat box here. How do you attract recruiters outside of the state where you live? That's a good question. Um, I would put in the, if you're looking, if you're targeting a move or if you're open to remote work, you might even put something like that in your about section because those are keyword searchable by recruiters. That's a fantastic question. 
Okay, I think that covers Waldo. If you've never played Where's Waldo, very entertaining. It will keep, it will keep your kids busy for at least five minutes. <laughs> okay, let's talk about the job search. Okay, in the chat box, has anyone used LinkedIn, um, the job board tab within LinkedIn? And what are your thoughts on it? Has anyone found any jobs on there that they've applied to? I'm going to watch for some of that in the chat while I'm sharing some content here. Um, the LinkedIn job board is, is really fantastic for a few reasons. It's unique in some ways that it'll show you if you know someone at an organization or if you know someone that knows someone at an organization, which is truly powerful in the job search. Um, someone in the chat says, well, it can be overwhelming at first. I agree with that. The more content we get, sometimes that does make it a bit overwhelming. But if you do a filtered, a couple of filtered searches on there and save those, then it'll start to email you once a week or so as you get new hits. And that makes it more manageable. It's easier to kind of take those filtered um, things to review rather than scoping for everything. So I, I agree that it can be. Okay, someone says yes, and I've applied to some on there. Excellent. Um, so sign up to get email alerts about jobs and target areas. So be sure to put some keywords in there. And you can find jobs by keyword, title, company. You can search a zip code, a function, an industry. Um, you can be pretty specific about it. I like that LinkedIn shows you how many competitors you have. And so you might see nine hours ago, someone posted this job and it only has the, you know, 10 candidates so far. I, I think that can be really encouraging, sometimes discouraging if you see the numbers high. That means that it's competitive and you need to have, you know, a very targeted resume for it. That's okay. More information in general is helpful. Um, let's see. Save jobs that you're interested in and you're able to come back to them for later. That's a feature that's pretty common. Uh, Indeed does that as well. Um, but I like the opportunity to be able to discover jobs in your network. So if someone that you worked with um, or you, that you met at a conference once may share that their team is hiring, you see it in the news feed. You can see it in that passive scroll, and, and that can be really helpful. Another feature of LinkedIn that's unique for the job search is even if we're doing a job search on Indeed or we're looking at company-specific websites, um, as, as part of our strategy, we should still use LinkedIn for the research for the social and the networking piece mm -hmm. because we can type in any company name in the search bar and it'll help us understand mm -hmm. if we know someone who's there or if we know someone who knows someone that's there that we might ask if they can help us get networked um, to for a quick coffee date or something. Mm -hmm. That can be so helpful. So mm -hmm. in addition to using LinkedIn profile, you can attach your resume and cover letter to your job applications directly through LinkedIn. You can keep track of applications on that job homepage. You can see jobs um, that you've applied to and employers can even flag when your application has been viewed. And that transparency I like very much. Some jobs will include the name of who posted it. And so it makes it easier to find who do I write my cover letter to or who, if I have questions, who do I reach out to? And I like that. Okay, a couple of questions coming through in the chat. So I'm gonna pivot over there for a second. How should you handle a recruiter who ghosts you or a committee that interviewed you and then ghosts you and you never, they never let you know if you move forward in the job search, the most professional approach in those situations. Unfortunately, that happens a great deal. And I, I it, it, that's a frustrating situation. You're not alone in that. Um, employers aren't um, reinforced for follow-up because they're not hiring the candidate. So that's unfortunate in that way, but it's okay to follow up with, with an employer. If, if it's been a week or two since you interviewed and you'd like to check in, try a different communication modality. So if they reached out to you to book the interview on telephone and you've left a voicemail and not heard anything, try, see if you can find their email or message them on LinkedIn directly and say that you're checking in to inquire regarding the status of the position to express your continued interest and to see if there was any update. Okay, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. That's not aggressive. I think that's assertive, but not aggressive. Okay, good question. Another question in the chat, it looks like this one uh, may have not went out to the whole group. I see I, many I see uh, jobs that's, that have just been posted like an hour ago and they have hundreds of applicants. How is it possible to have that many that quick? That's a great question. It's because lots of people are looking at it and it's probably a really good job. And if I were guessing, it might be a remote job because I can see 
on LinkedIn a trend that jobs that are remote tend to have a whole lot more. I think that's because we're competing as talent with anyone geographically. It's not like we're just competing locally in Lexington anymore. We're competing with talent across the board. I wouldn't say that's a super discourager though. If you're competitive for it, you're competitive for it. We just want to make sure that those keywords and that evidence of your ability to do the work is very clear. Here's another one in the chat. I've had a recruiters contact me because I have visited a company website or their LinkedIn profile. I also check who has searched me and if I'm interested, reach out to them even if they haven't reached out to me. I think paying for premium is a good benefit. Excellent. Okay. All right. That's a good topic. Um, in general, I don't, don't say like job seekers don't have to pay for premium LinkedIn. There's a free, um, you probably do it for free for a month, I think. And LinkedIn will email you all the time, upgrade to premium, upgrade here. Um, it's not a have to for job seekers, but if you do it, you can see a little bit more content about how someone found your name. Um, it makes it a little bit easier on the research side. So it's something to think about. Even if you do the free trial and then cancel it out, make sure you can make a set a reminder to cancel it out or it'll charge it. Um, but recruiters can see who visits their profile because they're using a super paid version of LinkedIn. They're using a more advanced version. Good question. All right, I think that's it for job search tips on here. Let's talk a little bit about using your network. So in the chat box, what's your comfort level on LinkedIn with reaching out to a complete stranger to introduce yourself? Um, and let's say um, a five is, I could do that, that's no problem. I've, I've already done that. And the one on the scale is, ew, I don't want to, don't make me, don't make me reach out to a stranger. That's very uncomfortable. So five, I'm very comfortable. One that makes me very uncomfortable and somewhere in between two, three, four. I want to for some of those to come through. Okay, I see a four, I see a three, five, five, excellent, excellent. I haven't seen any ones and that surprises me. Maybe those folks are like, mm, I'm not even gonna put it in the chat. There's another four, excellent. Um, when we talk about using your network, it's not enough just to apply to jobs in today's market. You have to harness the power of your network and using LinkedIn can be really helpful in doing that. So oftentimes job seekers that we're working with get frustrated and they'll say, I've applied to 30 jobs and I haven't heard anything. And we'll say, well, tell us more about your strategy. What else are you doing besides applying to jobs? And they're like, I'm not. I'm spending hours a day looking and applying to jobs. That's not enough. We have to broaden the strategy and networking has to be a piece of that, it has to. Um, now, here's an interesting thing. Research on the job search tells us that job seekers are more likely to land a job from a second or third degree connection over a first degree connection. What does that mean? It means people that we know are less likely to send us a job that we land than, hey, Someone else that posted on LinkedIn that, that had a job that was like that, let me see if I can get you two connected. That's how we're more likely to get jobs. So the science says that we have to network. We grow our network through searching our email contacts, finding people you know on there. You can do um, your college and school alumni. So if there's UK alumni on the call, um, join the alum, official alumni association group on there. Asking for introductions through your network is a great way to get connected to companies that you're interested in when working for and share updates with your LinkedIn network. So share articles, share links to videos or presentations. It doesn't have to be um, always an update about something that's going on with you. Sometimes it's informational and content, and that's really helpful too. Okay, let's talk about pages versus groups. Okay. Okay. We follow pages to learn and we join groups to interact. When you do a search feature up on the top, you can type in our area. So if we're a marketing um, expert, then we're gonna type in marketing on there as an example. And you'll see pages that come up about marketing and groups that come up about marketing. Pages help us learn about a company's products, services, latest news, employees that might be on LinkedIn. It'll show those very quickly job opportunities, and it can help us understand how we're connected to that company through our first, second, third degree connections. Um, we can see stats on their employers, 
where they worked before, where they worked after. So we could ask good questions if we're networking with them. So we want to follow companies that we're interested in to get updates from them on the LinkedIn homepage. It helps us go into an interview informed. And so whenever it's our turn to ask questions in the interview, we always want to prep questions in advance. We can say, I noticed on LinkedIn that you are um, starting this new initiative about something or that you have this new product. How would this job be involved in, in with that? Would, would I get the opportunity to partner with the group that's working on that project? It, it shows that you've done some research on the company. Okay? Groups. We join groups to interact. We join groups relevant to our professional interests. This could be alumni groups like we were talking about, industry-specific, geographic groups. We use groups to make connections, to find job listings, to establish thought leadership, and to keep your eye on trending industry issues. So we want to have a good balance of pages and groups. So if you're looking at your profile and you're like, hmm, I'm not following a lot of companies or a lot of profiles, a lot of groups, maybe that's a good action item for after today to go from good to great. The more pages and groups you follow, the more robust your news feed will become over time. You can also follow um, hashtags, and that's relatively new in the system, and that's helpful too. All right. Keep your LinkedIn profile up to date and complete. So every time you update your resume, we need to remember to update our LinkedIn profile. We'll keep, um, keep up to date with the changes in LinkedIn implements so your profile remains um, current. Keeping up with the job club, job club group is a good way to do that. And remember, users on LinkedIn can view your activity. So you need to regularly interact with your connections. I'm going to show you where you can see that. So if you are looking at someone's profile, we'll use mine as an example. And we go to my page. They can see your activity. They can see when you're liking stuff. They can see when you're sharing stuff right here under activity. Okay. It's not a big red flag if you don't interact or be active every day, but you need to be active couple times a week as a job seeker, right? Okay? It's, not, it's not unsurprising sometimes when I have job seekers who are just applying to jobs and not networking. And I go in to, to poke around on their LinkedIn to see what they've been doing. And this activity feed will say no recent activity, okay? If that's you and you look at your profile and it says no recent activity, you know what you gotta do, add that to your to-do list. Every month or so, uh, LinkedIn will issue updates. And so there's some timely updates that you can keep up um, with. There's a, you can add your personal pronouns on there. There's a feature under your profile where you can add the pronunciation of your name. Um, that's really nice for folks that have a tough last name, tough first name, um, to be able to include those two. So if you're looking to go from good to great and you've got a tough name, adding the pronunciation feature. If you're, especially if you're looking to go into higher ed or human resources, um, very service element um, types of roles, um, practicing gender inclusivity through sharing pronouns is very on trend right now. So consider sharing those too. Okay, here's a question in the chat. Is there a recommendation for how often to post on LinkedIn to keep yourself active? I, I try to go in a couple of times a week um, and I'm using it regularly for my job. So that might even be more than, than what the typical person has to do. Um, but I'd say once or twice a week, it doesn't mean that you have to post. It could be that you interact with something on your feed too. So it could be that a former coworker took a new job and you write on there, you know, give them a thumbs up or the clapping emoji, like congrats. And then you put in the comments, congratulations, so happy for you. That'll show up in your activity as well. And it's goodwill towards that person. Okay, let's talk about the mobile app. Um, for those of you that are already using it, if you don't already have the app, it's excellent. Um, most everything you can do on the app that you can do on the desktop, with the exception of some of these in-depth profile updates. But what I really like about using the app is if I'm at a conference, it is so easy to scan someone's QR code or to do the share my code um, to add someone quickly on LinkedIn, okay? Um, in the chat, 
Are there any app users? What do you think? Any tips? Feel free to share those uh, with the group too. But I really like the QR code um, for like adding someone pretty quickly. You can see on the top there, my code and then scan. And so I'll help someone kind of navigate over to that and then they'll scan mine or I'll scan theirs really quickly. Okay, in the chat box, we're gonna add in, um, Lindsay, can you add that for me? I'm not able to do it where I'm doing the screen share, but there's a LinkedIn job search checklist that LinkedIn provides, and it's very good. It has lots of data on there, and it'll go profile section uh, and give some, some tips. So we want to make sure in the chat box we'll give you that link. That's a free resource that LinkedIn provides. Thank you. All right, you'll see that in the chat box there. Okay. I think we're nearing the end of the, the content here that I have prepped. I'm happy to answer any questions. So I'm going to pivot over to Lindsay and see if the in-person group has any questions. I've been trying to keep up with the chat. Any questions from the in-person group over there? Okay, I'm not hearing any questions on there. Any questions from the audience online? Here's one. Um, how should you address a cover letter when you cannot find the hiring manager? I've read it's a best practice to address a cover letter to a specific person. That's true. If you can find someone, LinkedIn's a great place to start doing that research too. Ideally, we do address it to a specific person. It could be a human resources contact, Ideally, it's a department lead for the department that we want to go into. Even if we get it wrong, if we're close to the right person, no one's ever offended that it goes one or up, you know, one level up or down. That's fine. It shows that you did your research. Okay, so when we can, we want to do a little bit of research on there. We can do a company, um, a company search, and then do a filter by their department or by the um, area of expertise. I'm trying to think of another way we could do that too can do an example on here. So let's say hypothetically we want to work for Amazon. We'd go into Amazon's page and we would look at people. And then we'd probably do a keyword by what department? And that would help us find some folks. Not everyone's on LinkedIn. That's not personal. Um, but I bet we could get pretty close. And then Amazon is global. So we may even need to be more specific that maybe we're looking to go to the Seattle office. So we can continue to whittle, whittle it down from there. Okay. Um, question from Rachel here in the chat. Is it okay to accept a connection that maybe isn't uh, relative or helpful to your brand profile? Should you just accept all connections? That's a great question. Sometimes I'll get random connection invites. And in general, if it's a, someone affiliated with UK where I work, um, then I'm happy to accept those even if I don't personally know the person. Um, but some people are more uh, rigid on that boundary and say, if I haven't met the person or actually talked to them, I won't. It's always appropriate to message that person and say, thanks for the connection invite. Curious about, you know, what about my profile uh, led to you reaching out? Um, and you can get some great networking that way. Yeah. But in general, it, it's not likely to hurt anything. It, it's up to you. You can always unconnect with someone later and they don't get a notification uh, that you did. So that's our secret. <laughs> All right. A few other questions in here. Ooh, okay, back, back to Rachel's questions. If it's someone that you graduated with, I most typically would always accept those because they're in network. You know them, they're acquaintance maybe at that level. And it's not always about that relationship. Sometimes it's about who they know and LinkedIn's really helpful in helping us understand them. Okay, Dave says, do you recommend listing that you're unemployed? Um, not just adding the ready to work banner, but listing the dates. You can, there is an option in your profile section that's pretty new in the last year maybe to add an employment break, add a career break. And I've seen that be really effective for folks maybe who were caring for an ailing parent and needed to step away from, uh, from, from work for a while. Um, that's really up to you. That's really up to you. 
Um, I would say if you're unemployed, the job search is your job right now and be thinking about ways that you could volunteer so that you could have a current entry on there. Even if it, the job title is volunteer, then that, that makes you look more marketable too. Okay. Um, let's see here. Can you show people how to add a note uh, to a connection request or address how you should view messaging back and forth with new connections? I send a connection invite. Oh, yes. Okay, that's a good question. Um, thanks, McKenzie. I appreciate that. So let's say that we are searching for another connection, someone that we don't know yet. Inside of their profile, there'll be an option under more that'll say add connection. It's got a plus sign symbol on it. And a pop-up will come up and it'll say send request or personalize a note. In general, if we personalize the note, folks are more likely to accept the connection request. And that helps us understand why you're reaching out. So it's kind of like that random question that we were getting before, the random connection invite. Um, and so if I met someone at a conference, then I might personalize the note and say, great to meet you in session today, or great running into you, enjoyed talking about this. So it helps that person be like, oh, I, I met her um, in this session this afternoon. So it just makes you more likely to be accepted whenever you're sending those. Now, if you're using this as a networking tool and you're, you're not using the personalized function, you, that's a missed branding opportunity because you could go to uh, folks who, let's say you have a desired company, you look it up, Amazon on, is the example, and we are trying to add some folks in the marketing department because that's where we want to go. We personalize that and we say, I'm looking to join a great organization like Amazon. I see that you work there in marketing, would love to connect um, and, and ask for a networking chat. That's your opportunity right there to kind of customize that communication. Okay, I think that might get us through all of the online questions. Are there any others that I can support? All right, I think we might be through all those questions. So I'm going to pass it back over to the job club group to wrap us up. Okay, thank you, Amanda, of course, for a great presentation about LinkedIn. Um, Amanda is our guru when it comes to LinkedIn. And so any questions in the audience at all going once? Just want to ask you again before we move on to the next slide. Alrighty, so again, as mentioned in the beginning, if you have any questions, uh, those who are here in person after Job Club, feel free to stick around and we'll uh, answer those. Alrighty, so let's get moving to the next slide here. Okay, our, uh, okay. so let's talk about our Job Club Facilitators, uh, Fayette County Corporate Extension uh, here at um, 1140 Harry uh, Sykes Way. Uh, if you want to come here, there's plenty of opportunities here for families and children, resources, uh, natural resources that you can see, 4-H camps, things like that. And of course, you can um, find us at, well, find the Corporate Extension Office at fayette.extension at uky.edu. Once again, there's also a newsletter that you can sign up to get uh, sent to you for upcoming events. Go ahead to the next slide here. And Human Resources Steps Temporary Employment. I, Nicole Waite, work in temporary employment here at the University of Kentucky. So I'm going to share some job leads with you. It's gonna go pretty fast, but don't worry. I've already sent those um, job leads to our job club team and that those leads will be in your newsletter for today. So I'm just gonna mention some to you um, just in case you're interested. Let's see here, let's get those. All right, so at the top of the list here, we have a sterilization tech position, um, a steps data analyst position, patient services coordinator, wireless specialist, uh, extension office assistant. That one's actually in London, Kentucky. We have a college financial analyst position, physical therapist position, IT technical assistant, a painter, maintenance tech, maintenance tech, excuse me, an administrative associate, and many, many more. I couldn't even type them all on there, but those are just some to highlight at the moment. And as I mentioned, those jobs will be highlighted in the letter today, as well as the link for other jobs. You can find those jobs at ukjobs.uky.edu. 
um, and apply. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Um, any specific questions, sorry, about um, jobs in general, after you've applied, I will put you in contact with one of our consultants. Okay, so we can move on to the next slide here. Okay, U UK Alumni Career Services. So if you want some more one-on-one -on -one help with resume writing um, or just interview tips, more LinkedIn tips, things like that, then feel free to sign up. Um, and some of you have been here before, some of you have not. If you want to uh, review your packets, there, there's information in your packets also about signing up to get some one-on-one -on -one assistance with um, resume, as I mentioned, resume, uh, letters, LinkedIn, job search strategies, career transition, career exploration, and much more. Okay, so the next time at Job Club, that will be June 13th, Networking 101. And of course, Amanda mentioned a lot about networking um, during this presentation. And so we'll have our very own Carolyn Francis, the Director of Alumni Career Services here at the University of Kentucky. Carolyn will be presenting for us. And of course, she is a wealth of knowledge also. So of course, feel free to come back in and hear more, uh, kind of a continuing <laughs> presentation for what Amanda pr presented it today. Thank you all again for joining us here at Job Club. We look forward to meeting you at the next meeting.